experiment time. Today we're going to play with dough conditioners. Do they even work with sourdough bread? Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. So dough conditioners, dough enhancers or dough improvers are additives that you can add to your dough to help it perform better. Some of the claims are one, faster rising, two, better dough handling, three, it strengthens gluten, four, it increases the volume of the dough, and five, it keeps the bread fresh for longer. So how do they achieve this? Well, the manufacturers put an assortment of different things into these magic powders. Ascorbic acid, different glycerides, and calcium salts are some of the chemical sounding things that they add. Many more natural sounding ingredients like malted grain flour, milk, eggs, potatoes, and extra gluten might also be added. You might have used some of these in your own baking. Diastatic malt powder is a malted grain flour. You sprout a grain, dry it, and then mill it. You can even do this at home. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on how to do that. You might have added extra gluten to your flour by using vital wheat gluten, which is a pure gluten flour. The last thing that's commonly added to dough conditioners are enzymes that help with certain things. There are amylases that break down the starch in the flour let into simple sugars, thereby letting the yeast ferment the dough quicker. Malt is a natural source of amylase. Then again, we're back to the malted grain. Proteases improve dough extensibility by degrading some of the gluten. Too much gluten can also be a problem. If any of that scares you, I understand. They're all deemed safe for human consumption, but why would you want to eat that when you can make perfectly good bread with just flour, water, and salt? It's a very good question, which I will leave up to you to decide for yourself. I'm using a dough conditioner from a local store, and it contains the following ingredients. Wheat flour, wheat gluten, E472E, also known as diacetyl tartaric acid ester of mono and diglycerides. It's an emulsifier that strengthens gluten. E300, which is ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. Rapeseed oil and enzymes. It doesn't say which ones they added. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. So the recommended amount of conditioner is 2 to 3% of the flour weight. I will be making four loaves. The control bread, which is made with my standard experiment dough, 80% bread flour, 20% rye flour, 80% hydration, 20% inoculation, and 2% salt. Then I will make three more loaves with added 2, 3, and 4% of conditioner. We'll see how the dough behaves, develops, the oven spring, the crust, the crumb, and the taste. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch, use the super thanks, or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. This is the experiment. First, I mix all the different doughs. And then I let them rest for an hour. I perform three sets of stretch and fold spaced out by 30 minutes. During this first set, they all look very similar to each other. Now it's getting obvious that the conditioned doughs don't stretch as far. And that's even more obvious the third time around. Then they all go into bulking containers and rise at room temperature. While the conditioned dough should have had a faster rise, they all hit 25% about the same time. Want to hear a joke about construction? I'm still working on it. The first thing I do after fermentation is to pre-shape them all. Mm -hmm. 
all of the doughs kind of feel the same here. And then final shaping. While final shaping, I noticed that the conditioned doughs have a lot more strength and are very puffy. There's no difference between the three though. After the shaping, they all go into the fridge for a long retard. The next day in the evening, after about 30 hours of retarding, I heat my oven and then I grab the control. I dust it. I flip it. I score it. and then I bake it. After 24 minutes, I prepare the 2%. I dust it. I flip it. Whoops. It stuck to the liner because it was standing too close to the fridge's back wall. Well, we'll just fix that. Nobody will be the wiser. I score it. And then I move the control to the side of the Dutch oven. I put the 2% in the Dutch oven, put on the lid, and bake for 25 minutes more. I bake the rest of the loaves the same way. I let them all cool down, and now it's time to have a look at the crumb. I'll just show you a few slices of each loaf so you can get a better idea of the crumb. All right, let me smell and taste these. Mmm, smells wonderful, very bready, a slight tang. The crust has that deeply caramelized smell, I love it. Taste-wise, it's delicious. Nutty, malty, and earthy flavors. Slightly bitter roasted notes from the crust, it's excellent. Okay, I'll try the 2% next. This, this one smells exactly like the first one. And the taste, hmm, 
I cannot taste anything different. All right. Uh, okay, let me try the next one. Hmm. Hmm. It, it doesn't seem like the conditioner imparts any flavor at all. The last one. It's the same. All of the loaves taste precisely the same. So that was a bit surprising and somewhat of a bummer. <laughs> it seemed promising after the fermentation where the conditioned doughs had much more air and strength. The four finished loaves looked strikingly similar and it did look like the 4% conditioned dough had a tad bit more of an open crumb, but that may be a fluke. Oven spring wise, it was very much the same. If there was a difference, it was hard to tell, that's for sure. Taste-wise, it made absolutely no difference, which is a good thing, I guess. I hypothesized that the retard took away the power of the magic powder, so I suggest a repeat of this experiment where I bake warm instead of retarding the dough. Are you up for watching this, or is this topic outdebated? Another experiment could be an open crumb experiment with a dough made with 100% bread flour, or it's possible that it only works uh, or works best with commercial yeast. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.